Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. I think everyone can be watching except if you live in Florida. And you have a good excuse not to watch. So, you know, Florida, we just, oh. The rest of the country is really pulling for you and really feeling bad. So, we have raised thousands for Hurricane Harvey. Tomorrow is the last day to contribute to Hurricane Harvey. Then we're going to turn all the funds over. Thousands, you guys. We've read thousands of dollars. And we're just excited. And I want. I hope you all ex as excited as we are. Because we've been in a position to help. And we have. So you know what? We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again for Irma. And what we're going to do is take a week. Reprive. Take a couple weeks. Um, and in two weeks, so tonight, for the webcast normally that we do, we are going to do a sew along for Hurricane Irma. And we'll send those funds to Florida to help those people down there because I heard even on the news, they, don't, they can't even handle stuff. They just need money. They just need money to buy food, water, all those things. And it just, it's unbelievable. I, I can't even watch it anymore. It's just really unbelievable. So we want to show our support and when we can give, we should and we want to and we're grateful that we can. For all of us who can give, man, we're grateful we can. So what I would like to say is for those of you who we wouldn't normally do a sew along, we would, what we're going to do is the new blouse. It's pattern number 617. And we're, it's Mark's Twisted Blouse. We're going to do that as a sew along so that you all can get your pattern, watch. And you know, normally uh, people say to me all the time, you guys do this for free, you do this for free. And we do, we do them for free. But this time I want you to pretend it's not for free. It's, it's going to be for free, but I want you to pretend you have to pay $5. So for all those views, I want you to pretend you have to pay $5. And I want you, if you watch it, to pay five dollars and let all of that go toward Irma all right and we'll everybody here is going to contribute their time yada yada but I want you to pretend it cost and then we'll absolutely roll a hundred percent plus of that money on so we are extremely grateful and for all you in, in Florida we're so sorry we're just so sorry beyond words can express um we are going to sew because that's what we can do and we're going to have fun while we're sewing. So as long as we're going to sew something, we're going to, we might as well have fun. Tonight is 1850, pattern of the month, quilted jacket. I honestly don't think we have a pattern in the line that is as versatile, versatile to me as this pattern is. I, I just have so much fun with it and I'm hoping to portray that to you because it's just an incredible pattern. Um, years ago, I copied it from a girl who I was at a show, she walked into the booth and she had the jacket on and I just fell in love with it and I've made it every which way. You guys have seen lots of different versions. We're Instagramming now if you guys are on Instagram and we showed some photos. We can show them a little bit up closer so we showed some photos on Instagram. So follow us on Instagram and um, it's a good way to just when I go shopping, I take pictures and show you what I'm shopping for. And, you know, it's fun. It really is a lot of fun. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk darts and we're going to talk fitting. Fitting 1850 because there's very little fitting to it. But the fitting that is going to be done is going to take it to a whole different level for you. So I really hope you'll appreciate what we're going to do and understand and listen. So I did what I've told you all to do over and over and over, and that is I made a muslin. So I took my circumference, I made the best size possible, and I made a muslin. And the circumference, and this is kind of my duplicate body here. I lost a little bit of weight, and I haven't taken it off her, but it's okay. <laughs> um, usually if I lose weight, the first thing I do is like, unwrap or take it off and put it back on. But I've just been way too busy and haven't had a chance, but I'll get there. All right, so I want to talk about darts because what we know about darts is that it, we're going to go back to LCD for a minute. We know L is length and C is circumference and D is depth. D affects L and D affects C. 
When D affects L, darts are horizontal. So that's the bust dart, that's the waist darts, that's the sway back. It affects lengths. And what we know about darts that affect length is that they don't change circumference. Horizontal darts don't change circumference and vertical darts change circumference, but they don't change length. So that's the whole reason we have depth over here is because it affects length when it's horizontal and it affects circumference when it's vertical. And that's really good news because that means we have so much control over our garment. So in my conversations with many of you, we've had workshops and things I've gone to and I love going and seeing you guys. It's just way too much fun. And um, some of you have said to me, I don't like those kimono sleeves. They look bad, they look sloppy, yada, yada. And that's just not true. And <laughs> but I wanna show you how you can make them look almost like a set in sleeve and still have the ease of sewing that kimono. Because what we know about a kimono, I've made four different versions for you here. They're so quick and easy. And in certain occasions, I just think they're appropriate. They're just really fun. All right, so I'm gonna turn this like this and really all you have to do is drape one side because we know that once we drape, so what I did is I took my tissue, I, I traced it onto the muslin, I cut out the muslin and made it up, and now I'm gonna change the muslin and then use the muslin as my pattern. That's what I'm gonna do. And you can vary off of that or you can kind of do whatever you decide, but I'm just gonna tell you that's what I did. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll up this sleeve, kind of almost just to get it out of the way. And one thing I'm gonna show you a little bit later is vests are just all over the place for fall and they're a good thing. They are really, really fun, really fun. Okay, so we're gonna go first in order, L. L is length and it's from the shoulder to the bust, bust to waist. And you can, and you can be assured that if you are using a princess seam pattern from Silhouette Patterns, you will have no length adjustments from shoulder to bust. Let me say that again, if you're using a silhouette pattern and it's a princess seam, you will not ever have a length adjustment from shoulder to bust. Ever, ever, ever. I know where your bust is. I know short, tall, and the difference between. I know where your bust is. And remember, I have a bust circle to get that dart in between. So you will not have a length issue with a silhouette pattern in a princess seam. I have fit thousands and thousands of them and I will not be convinced that you are different, okay? You may be different, but it's on the inside, not on the outside. So leave that princess seam alone. Don't raise, don't lower, don't do anything to it. Okay, next then is the waist. And you can see there's kind of a little bit of buckling back here. So I'm actually gonna just, I'm gonna use these two seams. It does not have a center back seam. I'm gonna use these two seams to just take it in to kind of fit, since this is me, to fit my shape a little bit, okay? I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit. And because they are, um, the circumference is more than what I need at the waist, then you can see that I can bring it in kind of exactly to what I am. And I want obviously a little bit of ease, but I can actually make the waist exactly where I want it to be and I don't have to raise it or lower it, I can just bring the pins to make it work a little bit better. So while this is actually circumference that I'm taking away, I'm doing it to make the waist a little more fitted. All right, so there I have it. I like that better. You can see that it fits really nicely there through there. And so my, my lengths are okay. No problem with lengths. No problem with circumference. I like the sizing. I think it's good. I, it's where I want it to be. And so my next avenue is depth. And remember when we do depth, we always start up here and we check to make sure the shoulder angle is right. And if you notice, when I let this go, there's wrinkling down here. Remember that kimono sleeve? Kimonos, and the problem that a lot of women have with them is if the cup size is wrong, the extra comes up to the kimono, and if the shoulder angle is wrong, then that extra falls down into the kimono. So the kimono is kind of a, a place where both come together. So what we wanna do is make sure both are cleaned up, and then we can, um, we can have a really clean kimono sleeve. So I'm gonna pull this shoulder seam up, 
And because this is a kimono, I'm gonna make sure it goes to nothing at the neck edge and just carry it right through that seam. It's a princess seam. And then just blend it right back into this sleeve. It doesn't even matter where. But it's literally just gonna get blended right back in. Okay, but you can see that's gonna take up a little bit of those extra funkies. Okay, now notice, notice here, I've got diagonal lines. I'm gonna turn that so you can see it. Yeah, perfect. See how you can see those diagonals? I'm going to actually take a dart that will take those diagonals away. And I'm gonna start it right where the diagonal is from, and it's gonna go from one seam to another. So remember a little bit earlier when I was talking about darts, and I think you guys are ready for this. I was talking about darts that were horizontal and vertical. And in all of those cases, those two cases of those darts, they start at a seam and they stop in the middle of the fabric. So they stop for a bust dart. For, for instance, a bust dart stops in the middle of the fabric and you actually have to stitch it on a sewing machine. And a waist dart, a skirt dart, those all um, start at the edge they go to the middle of the fabric and then they stop. And anytime a dart stops in the middle of the fabric, you have to sew it on a sewing machine. Okay, but there's another kind of darts that we talk about all the time, but we're gonna talk about them again. And these darts actually start at one seam and go to another seam. And with a princess seam, you're really gonna use this kind of dart. And what you can see is when I use this kind of dart, I don't have to sew it on a sewing machine. And this particular kind of dart has an external pivot point. And that just means that the end of the dart ends on a, on a seam line, not in the middle of the fabric. And so you can see that I could take all that away with a dart. And it's really easy to do. And notice I've got a wrinkle there. I'm going to take a dart here. And this dart here represents that the cup size that I used, and I purposely used a cup size that was smaller than me so that we would get this angle. And you can see that you're just kind of going to play with the fabric until all of these angular lines go away. But you can see this one starts over here. It would be just like a bust dart. That's because the cup size that I made is not big enough for me. And so and so I'm pinning that out. And if you notice, it doesn't stop here at the seam. It just continues. So I'm going to continue it. I have to listen to my fabric. I have to listen to what my fabric's telling me to do. And it's telling me to keep going. So I'm going to keep going. And beautiful. Now you see the difference of how straight that's hanging and how there's very few little wrinkles in there. Even though it's a kimono, I get a really tight, clean, um, sleeve in there. Now let's go to the back because if I take it out of here, I've got to take it out of the back as well. So I'm going to continue that amount, not so the side seams will match. And again, once I get to the princess seam, I'm going to see if it stops and it does not. So because it doesn't stop, I have to keep going. And again, I'm going to listen to the fabric. The fabric always wins. All right, there you go. I'm only draping one side, but you see how much nicer that hangs and how few wrinkles there are. And again, this one, because I went to that portion, I'm gonna take it in the back as well. And again, that's so that the length of the seams will match. And if you'll notice, it's gonna come right up here to a seam also. And anytime I can go from one seam to another without um, stopping in the middle, that dart is not going to be in my final product the dart's actually going to just be in the pattern. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna stitch all these down because they're permanent. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change this one. I'm gonna change this one. I'm gonna stitch them down permanently in the muslin. And then when I use it to make my fabric up, my fabric will be much cleaner and much nicer. And you can see now that that kimono it just hangs like a set in sleeve. It's beautiful. Not exactly. Some vertical wrinkles are characteristic of a kimono, and I want them. That's part of the look, and it's good. So you can't get away every wrinkles because when we take away those seams, we're going to have to compromise a little bit on what we have. But that's just a beautiful look. You can see how smooth it is. You can see all my wrinkles are gone. They were mainly depth wrinkles. They were dart-related wrinkles, 
but not the kind of darts that we're literally going to stitch into the garment. They're just darts that we can go from one seam to another, maybe beyond, and then we can stitch them down onto our muslin. The pattern will still lay flat. That's ultimately our goal to see if they're right or wrong is our pattern has to still lay flat. So they can't be bigger here than they are here or here. Their biggest should be on one end, tapering to nothing or to something where it lays flat. All right, so let's address questions on that to see um, what the questions are. Does the dart go to nothing at the princess seam? It can in some cases, but in this particular case, it didn't go to nothing at the princess seam. So again, let your fabric do what it will do. If it goes to nothing, great. Mine would not. So I had to take it all the way to the front. All right, same with the back. It wouldn't go to nothing at the back. So I had to continue it all the way through to center back. And then of course it duplicates itself on the other side. Okay, darts for G cup. Should I increase take up in French dart and then add that amount to the side seam? Should I increase take up in French dart and then add that amount to the side seam like below the dart? Yes, yes. But always check your shoulder seam. You all, this whole side is a is kind of a marriage between the bust dart and the shoulder dart. So don't just rely on one of those two. It's a partnership to take away the wrinkles on the side. Use both of them. Use the shoulder dart, use the bust dart, use them both. I would always check the shoulder seam first because for me as a pattern maker, it's pretty darn hard to get that shoulder seam right for everybody out there with all the different you know, slopes and postures and everything else that we um, develop, okay? All right, I made a tank and I needed to make the, I made the tank and I needed to make the dart larger, but as I was using the D cup, I didn't know where to make the dart bigger. Um, just at the end, at the widest point of the dart, it should still go to nothing at the tip. It should just taper to nothing at the tip. So the only place you make it wider is at the side seam. And then what, however much you make it wider by, you have to add up that amount and then add it to the bottom so that your side seams will still match lengthwise. Okay? How do you do a rounded back on this pattern? Right the same as you do a rounded back on every pattern. Right there at the blades. And remember that you just continue to cut all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Okay? So this would be the sleeve. And you would add there, tapering to nothing, 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 all the way out into the sleeve. Your rounded back will not stop at this princess seam. It's too early on. It just continues all the way. It'll just be really small amounts here. It won't be any big deal. You'll never notice it. You'll never pick up on it. But it does have to go all the way to the edge of the sleeve. Okay? Is there a button that goes to the front at the waist with this pattern? Um, it's, it's completely your option. If you make it bigger and you want to overlap the front, I always have a ten I have a general attitude to make them open in the front. I, I don't really I mean there's different I've made some different ones back here and I'll show you the variations there. Are. But you can do either way that you want. After you stitch the adjustments, do you then take apart the kimono to use each piece as a new pattern piece? Yes, you do. So you're gonna stitch all these changes. Remember that I only need half, so I'm gonna cut it right on the center back fold, label the side back label the side front, and then label the front. If you draw your grain lines on before you start, then you won't have to draw the grain lines on again. And so, but your grain lines are all visual on this pattern. There's, you know, they're parallel to center front and they're parallel to center back, but you've got a lot of non-parallel stuff going on. So as long as the grain lines are visually straight, then there's nothing to worry about as far as the grain goes, okay? All right, so any other fitting questions, I'm gonna put our fitting doll away. I had done all of this before I started my different patterns. I changed my pattern and then I made this so that you could see it. Okay, we're gonna put her back. And she is fitted and looking really good. Okay, does that angle dart toward the shoulder go to nothing at the princess seam? It did. It went to nothing at the princess seam, yes. And that's where you guys can take away a lot of that gap when you come from the base of the kimono and go up to that princess seam 100% of the time that's going to clean that up and take away that gapping that extra but keep in mind that when you do take away from that area 
you lose mobility as to how high you can raise your arm. Not that you want it, but just be aware of that. That when I take away that fabric, I'm gonna lose a little bit of mobility because there's a little less fabric there to give me mo movement, okay? Since you picked up the shoulder seam, do you need to lower the sleeve? No, 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 the armhole is plenty big. No one's gonna, no one's gonna need to put it back. Okay, I guess that's a good question. That's a good question, actually. At first, I didn't realize what you were saying, but you're trying to check arm circumference, but that wouldn't be the arm circumference anyway. That's more the arm hole where I changed this. That's the top, and I took it to nothing really quickly, so it wouldn't really affect arm hole circumference until late, later, but then you could check it. Peggy, what are you wearing? I'm wearing the pattern of the month. It's 1850. It's just a new one I did. I did some color blocking on it, so we can kind of show that. Um, so I love color blocking. And again, going back to this jacket, I'd, I'd love to see so many of you make it posted on Facebook so we can see them or Instagram, whichever. And, and the reason why is because it's just simple and it's just fun, but it has princess seams and it fits beautifully. So I think way back when I first released this pattern, my whole intent was to present a jacket that could really be very artsy but that still wasn't a pillowcase because so many of the decorated jackets that we did and the artsy jackets that we did were, were square, they were boxes. And so this is gonna give you shaping to where you can shape it through those princess seams and get everything out of it. And then you can, you can cut it up. And so the first one that I did, this one is color blocking. So on this side, um, I used one color for the front and one color for the side. And the back, I used the same, the same color for the back and then center back, center back is the pink. Okay, then on this side, what I did, and then what I did is, this is a hot pink, we just put this up today, and then this is a charcoal gray. The striping that I used is the black fold over elastic, and it's just really fun and really easy to sew. Then on this side, what I did is I cut a section out of the bottom. So you can see that this is all pink. And then six inches from the bottom, I cut and put the gray on both the front and the back. And then did a fold over elastic on top of that. My, my fold over elastic I just used as, as basically like a trim. And it's really easy to use, it's really inexpensive. So I just did all of that. And then I did my fold over elastic on the outside for the um, the little slide. Now we we put this new trim up, the soutache, and I love it. I just love it. I use I use this kind of stuff for so many things. Then we've got your little um, what are these called, Brett? What are these called? We'll get it for you. I can't remember what they're called. The little. That should not stun me to this point, but for some reason it has. But anyway, the little stopper, cord stops. <laughs> That's just like what they sound, just cord stops. That's all they are. So and then I put little cord stops. And I don't know if y'all know it or not, but cord stops are actually supposed to go at the end so that it keeps it gathered, not at the end of the cord. So you can put them here and here, and I just think they're fun. I see them in ready to wear all the time, and I really like them. All right, so color blocking number one it's just a lot of fun that you can do with color blocking and so i would really encourage you for fall you see it a lot and it's just cute i've seen it all all kinds okay so the next thing that i did is i want to come back to thursday what is sutash made of um i don't know rayon i think it's rayon i think this is 100 percent rayon I'd have to burn it to be sure, um, but I think it's 100% rayon. Did you fold the elastic in half? No, I sewed it on flat. I sewed it on flat, and I didn't do the shiny side, I did the dull side. Shiny ties, for me, is too shiny, maybe for the holidays, but for this, I sewed it on flat. Okay, can we post to Silhouette's Instagram page? Of course you can, of course you can. We would love you to post to our Instagram page. Okay, so this is the black that I, that, that I did on Thursday. Love, love, love this. So again, because vests are so popular right now, I really wanted to show you using this pattern as like a vest. And I did several different ways. So this is just number one. 
And then what I wanted to see is where you've got pieces, you can really play with stripes. So this particular fabric is, um, this is a Rebecca Taylor fabric. It's beautiful. I mean, the fabric is just beautiful. I absolutely love making this. It's just woven rose is what it's called. Um, so on the front pieces, I put it vertical. And then on the side pieces, I put it horizontal. And then I added pockets as well because I've seen on a lot of vests that pockets are really popular. So I put the pockets on the front and just stitched them on. I put elastic in the back. So I'm going to show you the back. And you can see I just put elastic on the inside. I just did it to the amount I wanted it, stretched it, and pulled it in. So, and then I just took a little bit of the soutache and made a tie in the front. And then, of course, used the selvage. The selvage is so beautiful that it's really fun to use. So there it all is. I'm going to show you the pockets. There's the pockets. So you can see they they actually match they match the side of the jacket, but they're opposite going on the front. And so what I did is I matched the rows so that actually blend right into that jacket. I know it's hard to see, especially because it's black. But you can see there that the pockets just pick up the horizontal and blend right in. So they're stitched on top, even if it was white, it'd be hard to see because I, I took the the rows of fabric, the design of the fabric, and I built it right in so that it goes straight across. And then of course the fringe on the top. So the whole reason I did this guide sheet like last Thursday was I just wanted you to see how quick and easy this thing sews together. It's very quick, it's a lot of fun, and again it's got to be the most versatile garment as far as fabrics go because you can do wovens, you can do knits, you can do shears, you could just do anything with this particular pattern. All right, so there you have it. Just a really fun, a really fun little vest for fall. I made it long enough so where I could wear leggings with it and then just even like a turtleneck or whatever I wanted to do. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful vest. How many inches did you cut for the cute sleeve? Um, I took the sleeve. I'm going to use this pattern. So this is what the pattern looks like. I took the sleeve all the way up to where, see there's barely a sleeve down here. And then I left, how many inches is that? I think it's like 11. It's 11 inches from where it sews to here. You could do like 15. And then what I would recommend is just, mine was wider actually when I cut it. And then I, once I put it on, I cut it off because I really just wanted a little bit of a cap for this vest. And so what I would recommend is cut it like at 12 or 13 and then put it on. And I wanted it to look vertical, not horizontal. So that's why I cut a little bit more off was just because I wanted um, this piece and this piece to almost be the same width because this was going vertical and this was going horizontal. And I got, I got it. I mean, I, but it did take where I cut it a little bit wider because I wasn't sure and then I came back and cut it up a little bit. And I just love it. It's just so cute on. It's unbelievable. The big pockets, I just really like it. How did you finish the armholes on the black vest? I just surged the edge, turned them under, and top stitched. I could have done trim. I had enough trim left. Again, because the selvage was so beautiful. But I really wanted the focus to be down the front of this. And I think when you start trimming up the sleeves, your focus starts going to there as well, and I think you start to diversify. So keep the focus on this down the middle. And I would I would just serge the sleeves, you know, turn them under and top stitch, or turn them under twice and, and stitch either way, whatever works best for you. Uh, pardon? On the black vest, is there a different fabric on the front pieces? It looks plain where the sides look ruffled. No, it's the same exact fabric. It's just, again, it's how I turn the fabric. So let's kind of give you a, a close-up again. I'm losing my pieces. Hang on just a second. Okay, so there's the front. They're all, they all have like a little row in them. There's the front and there's the side. And then it goes to the side. And then with the back, again, the back, I put it down vertical. And again, it, it's just, you guys, these are just some ideas. There's so many ideas out there. 
I've seen so many. When I was, I was at uh, a store the other night. I mean, I happened to be at. I was in New York, and I happened to be at Saks Fifth Avenue. They had this exact jacket, and it was in a fabric. And I actually bought some very similar fabric. I bought new fabrics in New York while I was there, and I don't have them yet, but I'm really hoping they get in soon because I really want to make another version of this just using fabric pattern combination. It was just, just there's just some really great ideas out there. So by all means, just figure out what you want, which one you like best, and go for it. All right, color blocking. Lot, and, and any stripe, you could do lines vertical, lines horizontal, just any stripes you want, any way you want works really well. For the next one, what I did is I took every component of fall fashion. So remember the pattern that I said that vests, longer vests are popular. So for this particular one, I cut it a little bit longer than the pattern. But again, keep in mind, it's you want to be in proportion to yourself. I'm tall, I can get away with you know, it's like to the bottom of my fingertips. So this one's long on me. Okay, then that's that style. The next thing is sewing. Well, no, style to me was the length, but it's also what is big for fall, and neutral plaids are all over the place. They're just everywhere for fall. Neutral plaids, we said it in the fall forecast, for sure that's it. The next thing is deconstruction is really popular while we're sewing. So I didn't sew any of these right sides together. I simply overlapped. I cut the seam allowance down. Once I cut it all out, I cut the seam allowance down from 3 eighths to a quarter, to 1 eighth. And then I lapped the top over the side and I stitched it. I did like a little zigzag stitch. And honestly, looking at it, you can't even see it because I just, you know, I got a thread that matched really well. So you can't even see that. But I think even if you saw it, it would be incredible. It's really beautiful. Okay, so then what I want you to, sh what I want to show you is when you look at the back of this, you don't even see seams. You don't see seams at all. And that's because it's matched just perfectly. And I'm going to show you how I did it. It was not hard. It was not difficult. I think the word I would use most is it was just fun. It was really just fun. Um, when I look for clothes and I look, you know, at price points, what you see in very high-end things is they are matched. They're not always matched perfectly, but they're matched to where you can see a continuum of the style of the fabric. Okay, so that's what I want to focus on now. So there's a seam running here and there's a seam running here. But what I did is I started with a center back piece because that's really on the fold and that's where you want everything to start from. And in this particular design, my plaid, this plaid, this particular plaid, it's online, but this particular plaid is an even plaid. So sometimes they talk asymmetric plaids and sometimes they talk even, meaning that all the plaids are an even space away from each other and they repeat where with asymmetric plaids, or on even plaids, they don't have the same pattern between them. So even uneven plaids are much harder to work with because you've got to have way more fabric. It, this took about um, three yards. Depends on your size. Two yards if you're little or three yards if you're bigger. But you start with the center back and what I want you to see is how the center back is on a fold. So I put that fold right through. You can see the squares. I wanted one square right at the center back, so that's where I thought about and positioned it. But you literally take the straight line of center back, just like a bias, and run it straight along the plaid, and you do it in the middle of the fabric. And once you just follow these directions and you get your fabric out and you start laying them out, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Because what you're going to do is you're going to cut each piece single layer, and you just start at the center back lay that plaid where you want it, think about you know where you want the first plaid, et cetera, et cetera, and then go for it and cut it out. And remember when you're cutting on the fold, you're not folding the fabric, you're just cutting out the one piece and then turning it and then folding it. And I'm gonna show you something here for just a second. And Brett always tells me don't move the fabric too much because the camera goes nuts, but I'm gonna move the fabric. I'm gonna try really hard to, to hold it carefully. All right, so 
I kind of wanted you to see a little bit of my scraps so that you could see how that was my center back piece. And so you can see that it's going right through the corners of those blocks. And you're gonna use your blocks and you're gonna use that center back straight line and you're gonna line those all up and they'll line up perfectly. And then you're gonna lay your two side pieces on both sides of those and you're gonna cut those. Then you're gonna to go to your front sides, then you're gonna to go to your fronts. So the whole thing starts at center back and it wraps around to the front because I'm gonna show you my side seams and of course they match as well. You can see the stripes coming up there on this side and you can see the stripes coming there. You can't even see where those seams are. So the whole entire jacket flows from the back and winds around and it's all on bias and it winds around to the front. So you can't get any more contemporary as far as the looks of this go. You've got your neutral plaids, you've got a bias, you've got deconstruction because I just overlapped those seams and top stitch down. And as I wear it a little bit more, they'll probably fray a little bit right there. That would be perfect because it is a deconstructed look. The front edge, I went ahead and I turned under and finished. There really wasn't a selvage on this particular fabric. If you have a selvage, obviously use that. I probably could have picked a selvage. I didn't, I didn't want to. And then I get I did it again. I did fold over elastic on the inside as just a casing. And then I did cord stops with the same soutache. So there's a little bit of gathering in the back at my waist. I just love this vest. I just love it. And it, this is an interesting color because it's like a gray and a brown, but brown, and I forgot my brown pants, but brown looks amazing with it. Don't go charcoal gray, go brown. It just looks absolutely incredible. So this is the cut up tee that I've got underneath it. And then just a brown pair, like panorama of, of either leggings or yoga pants. And it'll, it's an amazing little outfit. I just really, really like it. Okay. But again, part of the reason I like it so much is because I know you can't find this stuff in the store. And if you find plaids and they're matched, you're talking about $2,000 and it's just crazy money for something. It just didn't take that long because again, you've only got four pieces. So it's a great thing you started center back, work your back. And then I took the back pieces to start cutting the side front and the, uh, the side front and then the front pieces. So I just worked all the way around. The key is having enough fabric to work with. If you're trying to do it with a yard, you're gonna get frustrated. But you could also put in some solid pieces if you wanted to, to just keep it easier. And you can work with the, the bias and then some solids and then the bias and you know rotate those around. Okay, are we okay? Questions? How many yards did you use for the black vest? Keep in mind that I turned things different directions. So I wasn't considering fabrics, yardage. I was only considering what I wanted. Um, and I added pockets and I don't remember, but I think I cut off two yards to start. I don't remember. Probably the best thing to do is if you have the pattern, lay it out on something that's striped, and that way you'll get an idea for your size, how much you need. Whenever people ask me yardage, I'm always nervous because I never know um, what size they're asking me, and size makes a big difference, you know, as to how, how much we use up as far as yardage goes. Would a heavier wool fabric work with the black vest? Absolutely, and, and just to reiterate, I honestly don't think there's a fabric that wouldn't work for this vest. For the, it's not a vest, but it can be a vest. It's a jacket. And this one you'll see that I'm going to pull up here. I did like just like the pattern. Like I did ribbing at the bottom of the cuffs. And yet there's so many alternatives. To think that all these are the same pattern, to me, it's, I don't know. I just, like I said, I love this jacket. I think it's just so versatile. This is a cotton knit. And because I was doing it out of a cotton knit and I wanted a little cold shoulder effect, I did... A matching tank underneath and then I made it longer so they're the same length and a pair of black leggings underneath is going to be a home run so it was just really fun to just kind of take one pattern and I would challenge you you guys I mean obviously when I do this pattern of the month it is to take one pattern and really 
you know, I'm going to say milk it, use it, learn it, understand it, understand what you can do with it and, you, you know, pull fabrics, buy new, get out of your stash, whatever, because the goal is for you to really understand that pattern. Then when you understand it, as events come along, you'll, you're more likely to go to one you understand and can use it in whatever capacity. Um, sheer fabrics, embroidered shears, there's just so many amazing fabrics out there that this would work with. I, I wouldn't even limit it. And I know on the back it says woven fabrics, but gosh, leather would be great. You know, leather's so big for fall, denim, you got it. You figure, I mean, I'll hush up, all right? Okay, so this particular one I did, and I wanted a little cold shoulder, and for a while now I've been thinking in my head, we have these little beaded they're beaded neck pieces, but I really wanted to use them with a cold shoulder. I just was trying to figure it out and trying to figure it out, and sure enough, I got it. And and you just see this thing on. It's just absolutely amazing. So what I did is, when it's kind of drooping like this, which is what you wanted to do, I measured how far it was from this point to this point. And at four inches is where it's meant to be. So if you were putting it on the front of a neck, it would be four inches. So what I did is I took the pattern and I cut two inches away from this piece and two inches away from this piece, the length that this is. So two inches in, down to nothing, two inches in, down to nothing, off the front and the side front. You wanna leave the back because what it's kinda of like a cow neck. What the back is gonna do is it's gonna stabilize the front so that it will hold it exactly in place. If you did the front and the back, it would, you know, nothing would stabilize it. It would fall all the way out. It wouldn't, it would, it would be tight, which I guess that would be a different look. But I actually wanted, you know, kind of like a little, I wanted the swag. I wanted a little bit of a swag look. Okay. So very fun to do. I went ahead and cut the sleeves full length. I did a banding. This is like a ribbing out of the same fabric. Fabric doesn't need to be you know you don't have to actually have ribbing any knit can work a ribbing so I did a little um, a ribbing there I pushed them up and kind of warm like that and then I just put an elastic on the inside just to give it a little bit of shaping rather you saw earlier where I pinned mine you don't need the elastic you can go and do it with the pins and how I shape the princess seam to fit the back but in this particular case I really wanted to give it a little bit of elastic in the back and so I pulled the elastic and just pulled it tight and did the elastic. And that elastic, other, you know, where I've done a casing and put the cord stops in, this won't shift. It'll always stay like it is um, and the elastic is stitched in place. So I just figured out how much smaller I wanted it. I cut the elastic, I cut a two inch wide elastic, stretched it and stitched it into place top and bottom. So it has a little bit, bitty band around the bottom and you can see I did this on both sides, so I've got a little cold shoulder. It's a little different look for the cold shoulder. And again, that cold shoulder is definitely into fall. I keep thinking, who wants their sh shoulders that cold in the fall? But it, it's, it's all over. It's still really popular. And I like, I'm getting to where I like it, I think because I like different creative parts of it. And so again, I made the tank underneath. I made it, one of the reasons I did it is so that as the cold shoulder was there you can actually see the tank top underneath and I really liked how this this is a royal blue cotton that we have the royal blue peeks out from underneath the cold shoulder that's kind of the look I was going for and I really like it it's it's really cute on um, the belt I just did because I wanted something underneath as a belt but you could simply do many different things that was just the option that I gave okay so it's amazing see we've got knit what well, we did in muslin we've got i guess two and knit two and woven two and knit and two and woven i didn't change sizing at all um i just did them like they were or i changed up a casing or elastic or something along those natures but you notice i didn't quilt it at all it's called quilted jacket we didn't quilt but again i wanted to do it out of so many different fabrics but if you're looking on facebook and instagram a lot of ladies have posted their versions and there's some really good looking versions out there one thing, I mean, obviously what was important to me to get across was how easy it was to sew and how easy it was to fit. 
And so without a sudden sleeve, without a collar, without button, you know, there's just yada yada. There's all kinds of fun things you can do with this. All right, so let's take a few minutes. We've got a few minutes left to just answer questions. Two weeks from tonight, tomorrow is the last day for Hurricane Harvey. And then in two weeks, we'll do a Hurricane Irma. So along, and that'll be with 617 with Mark's Twisted Blouse. And questions. Could you give a close-up of the shoulder? Sure. Right, Brent? Sure. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I'll move these pins out of the way. So we can move, we can both move toward each other. There we go. So you can, I don't know if you can see, there's the little beading there. I've got an arm underneath here, so you can kind of see that beading. It's the beaded neck pieces that we have on the website. They're so beautiful. I mean, they're really pretty, but I wanted to use them somewhere else besides the neck piece. I wanted to use them in the shoulder. And there's the one on this side. So they're kind of, they're really fun. I mean, they're really fun. Very easy to use. So when I sewed them in, I sewed them like an invisible zipper. You use the zipper foot and you stitch along, right along the edge. You know, you put them on this side, raw, raw edges together, and then you flip them in this side, just like an invisible zipper. And then once you sew down to the bottom, I folded the fabric over it and just top stitched it down right to the bottom. Just fun, just really fun. Can you please explain the ribbing again? Well, ribbing, ribbing is, um, ribbing is a kind of fabric, obviously, but you don't need ribbing to do a cuff like this. You can use any knit fabric. Ribbing was probably popular in the day where our knits weren't as stretchy or our knits weren't as popular. But now we have knits and the knits stretch so much that, so in this case, I just made a cuff that was smaller than the bottom of the sleeve and then just stretch the sleeve, stretch the cuff into the sleeve. So you just figure out how big your cuff is that you want and then stretch it and sew it together to the bottom of the sleeve. So it just makes it really easy. And then what I wanted to do is because I wanted, I love pushed up sleeves. You guys probably know that I wear them all the time, but I wanted to wear this pushed up. So I actually made it at the size of my forearm as opposed to the size of my wrist. Otherwise it would have gotten stretched out. So I just made it two inches wide. So four inches wide, the width of, that I wanted my, <clears throat> my forearm, I'm losing my voice and then um, stitched it all the way around. Very easy to do. But there is, there is a cuff in the directions and there is um, instructions on how to do it in the, in the pattern. Okay, that's not anything I added. That was actually in the pattern. And I just realized that I hadn't shown you how to do that prior, so I wanted to include it on a knit. But my point was you don't actually have to have ribbing. You can use lots of miscellaneous knit fabrics. Okay? Okay, are we good? Really? All right, everybody. That means it's sewing time. It's time to go sew. And hopefully you'll have happy sewing dreams. Now we had a wonderful time at the workshops. We actually have a Miami workshop coming up in about three weeks. But Miami will have all their power back and so we're still, we're gonna plunge ahead. It'll be wonderful to go down and see my friends, I've got so many friends down there who have really, they're just suffering. You know, it's funny because I grew up in Miami. And so, and I lived in Houston for a long time. And these are the two cities, and Corpus Christi, these are the cities that I love and adore. And they're getting just annihilated. It's just not good. And it's just earlier today there was a, anyway, I won't even, I can't talk about it. So we're going to help. We're going to help what we can do. We can sew, we can contribute. And I'm hoping that you just pretend two weeks from now it's not free and that you'll donate a little bit. But like I said, for Hurricane Harvey, you guys, I can't say thanks enough. I'm so proud to represent Silhouette Patterns and be able to give literally the thousands of dollars we're going to be able to give. And not only 100% goes, 100% plus. We add some to it. So we can't say thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got such a good group of people who are our customers. We love our customers. You guys are the best. All right, we good? All right, so from Silhouette Patterns, from everybody, everybody today wanted to say hello. Hello, happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns, and we will see you in two weeks. Good night. Bye.